Welcome to you all. This is Joe Soro for the Lakers Fast Break Nightcap. Uh, we've had uh, our post game like we normally do, uh, but, but one of the beautiful things about an early game is that we're able to get a nightcap in at a time that I think I can get to everyone. So everyone and anyone that's watching or getting ready to come on, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sean Grice will be here shortly. Uh, I got the uh, announcement to him uh, not just a few moments ago. It's been a uh, somewhat busy evening, but not enough, not not too busy to not to talk more about, I guess, game 82 and what is in store for game 83 and possibly game 84. Uh, the Lakers defeated the Pelicans tonight in pretty dominating fashion. Uh, I'd say from the tip, I didn't see much resistance from New Orleans. Uh, the Lakers seem to uh play New Orleans pretty well. They match up very well with them. And the score was 124-108. I thought it was fitting, you know, 124-108 to end the year. Uh, I know every time we look at any numbers, anytime 24 and 8 come up, we all think of Kobe. But um, how you doing, Blue Magic? Hey, cool, bro. How you doing? But uh the Lakers, uh I'd say it was nice to see D'Angelo kind of get out of get off his schneid. Hopefully. Uh, whatever Schneid he got on here the last few games is gone. Uh, the Lakers are going to need him more than ever, absolutely more than ever. And uh, AD and, and LeBron, of course, had a uh, triple-double. AD had his uh, 64th uh, double-double of the year. I think Sabonis might be the only one that has more. I have to check on those stats. But it was a pretty dominating game, uh, a game that I, I've gotten used to watching and I had discussed this on post game where it almost feels like anytime the Lakers dominate a good team and New Orleans is a good team, we assume that we should have beat them like that. And the Lakers are much better than they really are. Uh, you can look at it that way. I, I like to say when the Lakers are on, they're on. It doesn't matter who they're playing. Uh, but tonight, LeBron looked like he had a, he had a he had a focus. AD kind of was as consistent as he's ever been uh, throughout the year. I feel like thirty and eleven is always his his line. He's just that he's that dominant. Uh, he didn't have any blocks tonight, which was kind of funny. <laughs> I don't get a, I, you don't you don't get a chance to see him uh, go an entire game without any blocks. I thought that was kind of interesting. LeBron, I think, had eleven assists nine minutes into the game. I didn't notice because some of the some of the crew was talking about or following the stats there on playback, and I didn't I didn't know I I wasn't paying attention, but the passing was phenomenal. I thought Rui's dives and Rui's movement was beautiful. Uh, again, D'Angelo and, and and Austin were making their shots. This is this is what we're looking for, folks. This is what we want. The only issue I'd say is uh, the bench didn't do much. I thought tonight would be a good night to maybe get some things going since they had some cushion, but. The Lakers are going to have to do something here, whatever it is, with those five. And if any of those five don't work out, it's going to be hard for those other four to carry that. So we're crossing our fingers that the five can continue to do what they're doing when they're playing well. And then at that point, we'll see what happens. And right now, they're going to stay in New Orleans. Uh, uh, Anthony Davis tweaked his back a little bit. He had some spasms. But uh, he's guaranteed to play on Tuesday, of course. I wasn't doubting that by any means. Spasms usually go away after a day or so. Just get some treatment on that. But they play New Orleans again on Tuesday, and it's likely going to be a much more difficult game on Tuesday, uh, if I had to take a guess. And if you win that game, then the Lakers will uh, face their nemesis in the first round as a seven seed, and that is the Denver Nuggets. And that's something we're going to talk about tonight uh, a little bit more. Uh, but until until then, we're going to go back to the to the game tonight. I saw some. I saw. I saw something I wasn't seeing early on in the year. The New Orleans Hornets went into a zone, and the Lakers have been playing against the zone pretty much perfectly the last few months. But I just thought it was kind of cool to see how. They struggled so much playing against the zone uh, at the beginning of the year. Then all of a sudden now someone throws a zone and they were just finding their spots and killing them. So the Lakers 
have been coached up. I know it's probably not good enough for us stubborn people. Uh, but let's let's say Darvin Ham's figured out a few things. Maybe his assistants did help him. I don't know. But all I know is there's been some coaching that's been going on, and it has been working. Okay, Joe, what did you make of LeBron's postgame comments saying he feels better than last year? I actually was very encouraged by that lifted. I'm not going to lie. I thought – I thought I, I'm thinking if that's the case because I had some of my 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 people email that this not too long ago. I uh, it's what it's, it's what we want to hear. Uh, if LeBron feels better this year than he did last year, that could mean very interesting things, especially with the way he controlled the game tonight. And this is probably the 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 headline for t- tonight's game is LeBron looked like initiator LeBron of 2020, where he won the assist title. And if that's the LeBron the Lakers are going to produce and everyone's doing their – and I, I know this is kind of a cliche, but seriously, like if this is what LeBron's doing and you and and Rui and and D'Angelo and Austin and, and AD are going to spots, moving around, it's, it's basic stuff, then this is going to be an interesting – I'm just going to say interesting right now because Lakers are not technically in the playoffs yet. Want to wait till that gets done, then we can start talking playoffs. But it'd be a very interesting uh, run here. And they're going to get, should they win Tuesday, the big dose, the big, the world champs, the guys that have beaten them eight times in a row. I think it might be nine, uh, a game from year before, year before 2023. But I have to check the, the stats on that. But it's, it's very encouraging that LeBron is already setting the stage here. And, you know, LeBron and I, and LeBron is just a hot and cold type man I sometimes I love him to death sometimes I can't stand him this is one of those things where I, I I love hearing that that's what you want to hear you want to hear man I feel much better than I did last year I'm about to get I'm gonna I'm about to get my freak on and that right there LeBron's some of the one of the few guys in the history of the NBA that I've watched where when he's a little irritated he plays better Michael Jordan Kobe Bryant Shaq uh those guys just absolutely go into another realm and just dominate when they uh, when they're angry. So it's 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 very encouraging. I'm very excited. Tuesday's going to be an important game, obviously, to solidify your position. You get the seventh seed, and then of course you're going to meet Denver. Should you do that? If they don't win on Tuesday, that means they face, in my opinion, likely Golden State because I think Golden State's going to take Sacramento out, even though they'll be on the road. And then of course that is going to be extremely dangerous if you end up playing Golden State in LA or, or they're going to be playing in LA should they lose that game anyways or if it is Golden State but you know Steph Curry and Clay, just like the last game they those guys get hot everybody else got hot that game too then it, it could be you know lights out before you even have a chance so I would highly recommend the Lakers win Tuesday and deal with the Denver thing rather than play the the, the sneaky game you don't want to do that guys you don't want to take a chance on that uh, and that's kind of how I feel on it. Um, I'm going to get to your questions right now, guys. I'm going to scroll up here. Uh, let's see here. Do you think Ham started making more sense in his rotations because Polika spoke to him? I don't know how high, high octane. I, I haven't gotten any word that that was a discussion. And I would like to think that uh, maybe maybe Darvin Ham figured some things out as things progressed. And that happens sometimes. Maybe he got really good at his job. Maybe uh phil handy showed him some tape that made him wake up maybe he stopped being stubborn there's a lot of a lot of a lot of solutions to that answer a lot of a lot of answers to that question but we're we would have to do some more investigating to know joe back-to-back road wins at new orleans not sure if we are that good and lucky uh i i think we are this is a desperation game uh it's not so much a game where they have to they have to do it's 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 a desperation game. This is a playoff game because it puts you in the playoffs. The Lakers, I have full confidence because of the matchup issues that New Orleans has against the Lakers. I have I have full confidence that the Lakers will win. I just don't think it'll be as as, as much of a blowout as it was tonight. I think New Orleans will will adjust and then they'll, they'll make it more competitive. And whether they whether the Lakers win or not, that's that's going to be obviously seen on Tuesday once. Once, once it, once, once the game starts. Let's see, where are we, Joe? It's probably better to face Denver now than later with a fresher team. I actually had this thought uh, a few months ago. Actually, I was really thinking about it because it, 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 it did look like 
the Lakers were going to continue to stay in that bottom half of the of the of the seedings. And I said to myself, if this is if this is where they're gonna be, and there's this constant merry-go-round between Oklahoma City and Minnesota, then maybe it might be maybe it might be best where LeBron is as fresh as he is, like he said, A D. Maybe it might be better to face these guys early on when you're at your highest ability than later. I don't know. I don't know if that's the answer. I really don't. I, I just uh, all I know is uh, there's so much at stake here. There's so much at stake. I don't know. I, I'm trying to battle. Okay, make sure that this happens. Make sure that happens. Uh, because I'm more, I'm worried about Boston right now. If something happens to Jamal Murray, like let's say even if Denver beats the Lakers in the first round, if Jamal Murray gets hurt the second round, I'm gonna my heart's gonna drop because I think Denver's the only team that can dominate the Boston Celtics in the finals. I think Oklahoma City or Minnesota or if Dallas goes in some way, I think uh, Boston might take it all. Now I have I have a good feeling too that there might be a surprise in the East because there's been a surprise every year but maybe this might be the year where boston kind of clears the path i don't know we're gonna have to wait and see what happens joe if we don't get past the first round is ham gone i don't think so i don't think so guys uh i think the most important thing for this off season uh, and i did mention this in the post game is i think the lakers need to stop thinking about moving things all the time i think they need to really focus on an addition the addition, the addition and the addition this summer, should they lose or win, uh, is paramount. You want to bring in someone without breaking up the continuity. I know that we still have to wait and see how uh, D'Angelo Russell plays. Of course, as soon as D'Angelo has a bad game right away, it's let him go, do this. We're very reactive with D'Angelo. Uh, I think continuity is going to be huge at this point. We've Lakers made a huge mistake in 2021 by messing up the continuity. I don't recommend that they do it again. This time, you got young players, by the way, too. Rui's young. He's getting better every game, it seems. Austin's young. He's going to continue to get better. D'Angelo is finally getting his stride. Let the team stay together and then add a couple of studs in the summer, whether it's through the draft. Right now, word is around uh, New Orleans that they're going to let uh, the Lakers keep the pick. So maybe you get lucky in this time and, and get a, get a productive player at, in the draft for, 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 for next year. And then you bring in somebody for the MLE. That's not a my ex Miami heat player and maybe bring someone that could really be a part of the rotation and someone that could really supplant LeBron or AD when they sit, that's going to be huge. Um, but with that, again, it's, it's, we're very reactive. We're a reactive bunch, and we're not gonna we're not gonna really know how to approach things uh, until this thing is done. Um, Joe, that looked like a different team today. It looked like LeBron was coaching that team today. Timeouts were being called when needed. Something Ham hasn't done all season. <sighs> you know, Flamingo, I, I I wouldn't be shocked if LeBron finally took the reins. Maybe he sat down with Dar Darvin and said, "Look." Let me be the leader of this team. Let me coach him up, and then I'll make your life easy. Could have been. It could have been. I don't know, guys. I really don't know. It's such a such a weird season. There's so many weird things going on. Where last week I thought for sure Denver had it. Then they lose to San Antonio a couple nights ago, and then Oklahoma City and Minnesota. Minnesota gets waxed at home when they had one the one seed clearly ahead of them if they just win. Uh, well, actually they wouldn't have because they would have lost the tiebreaker to Oklahoma City. And maybe that's maybe they did that on purpose. Maybe they did realize, hey, look, if we lose this game, uh, we'd rather play uh, Phoenix than L.A. Who knows? Uh, it'd be a good discussion to talk to some of those guys before then. Let's see here. Mavs will beat the Clippers. Uh, if, if Kawhi is not playing or is not healthy, then I think Dallas will likely take it. But remember, guys, playoffs are a different beast. Things could happen. Let's see here. Bring in a center. Uh, Joe, what do you think? What do you, where do you like LeBron in all-time passers? <sighs> Top five. I, I would say LeBron in terms of his uh, 
court awareness, his ability to get the ball to a center, a guard, uh, an outside shooter, uh, as good as they have as as there as there ever been. He's when he was coming out of high school, they 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 the pundits said that he is a combination of Michael Jordan and, and Magic Johnson, which was just a crazy comparison. Like, really, you're, you're putting Magic and Jordan together? Well, it turns out he, he fulfilled them. He fulfilled it. I don't think he he could control the game as much as I don't think anyone controlled a basketball game better than Magic Johnson. And that's not that's not downgrading LeBron or John Stockton or I never saw Oscar Robertson play, so I can't base anything on that or Bob Cousy. But I never I saw the last and I saw the bat like the the later parts of Magic. Uh, but I do have some tape. I have all the finals uh, games on on uh, on on USB, and I've watched all the games, all six games in uh, 80, 82, all all of them in uh, in eighty five, uh, all six in eighty seven, eighty eight. I saw all those games, and Magic was Magic could control a game without scoring, and that to me is just it, it, it that takes it to a different level. LeBron. As as great of a passer as he he is, he, he, I don't think he could ever control and win a game scoring thirteen points. You could say it's a different game now. You could say different talent, yeah. But I I just don't think anyone is a better passer than Magic Johnson. I don't think I ever saw anybody that could pass better than him. Joe, the Celtics are in the East week week conference. Don't be too scared. You know you're right, problem child. I, I I've talked about the East being really 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 bad uh in terms of dominance uh they haven't i haven't felt that there's been a team really that has dominated in the east other than maybe the miami team in in 12 and 13 to some degree i think that's probably the only team but even those teams they barely won they they probably should have lost in 2013 to the to the spurs without the ray allen shot and and even in 2012, LeBron needed to come back from a 3-2 deficit against Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I just haven't seen any dominance since 98. Uh, that was the last that was the last time I felt like the East really had a dominance uh, versus the West. Joe Dilo finished the season shooting 42. This was a this was probably the best season I've ever seen. Uh, no hyperbole there. This is the greatest shooting Laker team I've ever seen, at least from three. From three. You had LeBron, I believe, shot from 40% from three. You had Rui, and you had uh, D'Angelo. I mean, you, you they if they hadn't done what they did, they, this would have been probably a 41-42 win team if they hadn't. That, that, that made that much of a difference. Let's see here. Where are we? I think Sean is trying to get a hold of me here. Uh, sorry, folks. Give me a minute here. I got to send Shawnee a new email. How many new emails does this guy get? Let's see here. Where are we? Where are we? Sean Grice. There we go. Let's give him the... There we go. Let's see if that one works. Anyways, uh, Joe, the Clippers going to flame out per usual. Probably. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is just not a. He's 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 walking on glass. Uh, I think that's kind of what what it ends up being this late in the year. If anyone needed half the season to to not play, it'd be it'd be Kawhi. But they don't, you know, the, the league doesn't allow you to have that kind of depth to to just rely on backups. So I don't think uh, I don't think that'll ever I don't think that'll ever happen. But no, I don't I don't think the Clippers. I think they'll flame out at some point. Uh, whether they beat da- Dallas or not, I'm I'm still kind of up in the air. Dallas will will have a tendency to kind of disappoint as well. But you, Luca's gonna need to be Luca, and if Luca's Luca, then you got a really good shot at taking the Clippers out. And if that happens, look for the Clippers to possibly do some things this summer, especially with them opening up the new arena in Inglewood. 
Well, he's Mr. Glass because his body's just breaking down. Uh, you're talking about a guy who's, you know, been in, what is this, his 13th year? 13th year? Not everybody's going to be like LeBron, guys. 13 years in the NBA is a hell of a career. Hell, Magic played only really 12 and a half. Uh, Michael played 15, really 13. Those last two years in Washington were more of a, uh, a feeler. But, uh, but yeah, he's he's uh, most most NBA players are going to be effective probably within that. Let's say guys that are as good as he is, it's going to be that twelve to fifteen range, and then after well, after that, it's it's sayonara. No matter how good the medicine is, sometimes the body just won't react, won't won't won't, won't listen. <laughs> Joe, let's hope Vando comes back soon. I don't know if Vando's going to make a difference, guys, especially against Denver. Should the Lakers win on Tuesday, I would say the Lakers are going to have to rely on. They're going to have to rely on the, the starters to really, really, really play well and really play efficient like they did tonight. Tonight was just, was as perfect a game as as you could have from from the five from the five guys. If you can do that, then you got a really, really good chance to do making some noise here. Joe, are you uh, who are the Lakers going to face in the conference finals? It won't be Denver. OK, let's look at the standings here. I'm going to I'm going to play a little. Let's let's play a little uh, figuring out. Okay, so right now the Lakers. Let's say the Lakers and the Warriors end up going to the playoffs. So that means the Warriors get the eight, and the uh, the Lakers get the seven. I think Oklahoma City takes out the Warriors. Let's just say the Lakers upset Denver. Right. Let's just say they do. Minnesota would play. Minnesota's going to play Phoenix. Let's say Minnesota wins that series. And then let's say Dallas beats the Clippers. Let's just use that. So now you have Oklahoma City playing Dallas. And then the Lakers would play Minnesota. And if the Lakers beat Minnesota, then they face the winner of the Dallas-Oklahoma City Thunder uh, series. I'd like to think that Oklahoma City's got matchup advantages against the, the, the Mavericks. They have the better uh, – they might not have the better player. Uh, I think Luka's a little bit better than Shea in terms of total team basketball, although athletically he's obviously better. But I, I'd say that Oklahoma City has a little bit more depth, a little bit more pizzazz. So let's say Oklahoma City Thunder win that series and the Lakers upset Minnesota. Lakers would face Oklahoma City in the Western Conference Finals. And I feel very confident if that were to happen, that the Lakers could end up going to the finals. And who they meet in the finals? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah. That's an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to say the Celtics. I think they're due at this point. What better way to have uh, this season go the way it did, did and only to face the Celtics in the finals. And, of course, will the Lakers have enough to beat the Celtics? That's something I don't want to talk about until I have to. Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> Joe, call me crazy, but I like my chance. To... Well, you know, at this point, what else are you going to do, right? What else are you going to do? Hey, Sean Grice has arrived, folks. The Magic Man. How you doing, brother? I'm great, brother. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we're talking possible scenarios here. I've been getting some really good questions from the from the chat room here. I uh, the Lakers. I must, uh, the Lakers played tonight like 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 they were ready to play for mm -hmm. a title, right? Mm -hmm. LeBron's ability to initiate tonight was clear and concise. And it almost was a message. Now, if they can repeat exactly what they did tonight or today, Tuesday, then things could get really interesting. Because my instincts say, well, New Orleans is going to adjust. They're going to do some things. They're a good team. Maybe it'll be a closer game, but I, I, I can see the Lakers finishing this off. However, if they if if, Le, if they if New Orleans can't stop the Lakers two nights in a row, now what? What are the Lakers going to be here the rest of the way? That's, That's the an question. interesting question, no doubt. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think Zion will shoot as poorly as he did tonight again. That being said, Joe, in the minutes that mattered, we were up by a minimum 20 points. It was a shellacking. It really was. And I don't think the Pelicans are up for shellac. Like, they did shellac us that one time after shortly after the um the plan when uh, we were we were diving we were nose diving in december and they were on the up and up we were looking up at them at that point and um but i don't see them doing that to us again so i i almost see new orleans is kind of they're i think they're okay with playing a second game against the Warriors or the Kings. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what's okay and what's not at this point. It's such a crap shoot. And I well you, you know something? It, it it's what they say, right? Like eventually you're going to have to beat Denver if you want to get to the final. So I mean if you're playing them off the hop right there in the first round, no time like the present. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't be favored. <clears throat> uh, that being said, you still got to play the game. I don't think their bench is as strong as it was. Um, so I I think they're vulnerable in any round they play in, Joe, as, as much as they are a finals favorite to come out of the West. I think the flaws that they have make them vulnerable in every single round. Okay, so here's a question I have for you. If the Lakers win game one against Denver, should they make it? Again, we got to win on Tuesday. What happens then? Because that was the difference last year. The Lakers stealing game one in Memphis, stealing game one in Golden State, and everybody started, both Memphis and, and Golden State were playing catch up. They just couldn't catch up. It, it's All you have to do is win your home games, right? And... I know it's easy to do that in your head. Yeah, in order to shorten a series, you def if you're on the road, you definitely want to split the first two. If you want to shorten the series as much as possible and not get it to a game seven. I'm gonna say if the Lakers beat Denver, it's gotta it, do I see them beating Denver at home in a seven? I don't. Yeah, I don't know about that. That is that is the um, rabbit's foot four leaf clover you find in the feral wild, Joe. It's extremely rare for a road team to win a game seven. So they're the gonna NBA. have to win. They're gonna have to win one in Denver early, early mm -hmm. as possible, because beating Denver two games in a row is gonna be tough, and it's much easier. I guess would be easier if they're both back to back at home. Yeah, so the Lakers would likely have to win game one to probably win that series and then win two games at home, lose to Denver at home and Denver, and then come back and finish it in six. That's that's likely the scenario. But the what, what about this? Do they blow their wad if mm -hmm. they do? Is six games a lot? Is, the, is it the stress? Is it the, the hope all put into one? Like, would that tire them out to the point where – Oh my God! I don't know if we have enough energy to go play Minnesota or Phoenix or whatever. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean that's interesting too. If uh, basically uh, burn that gasoline all the way to the end, um, Alice, that's a good point. I I know that the first round is drawn out. Uh, that could be a benefit for for LA, of course, because LeBron always seems like he's got an extra jump when it's two or three days off. Well, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there'll be a big time difference either because, you know, that mountain time, it's, I think it's only an hour difference now. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct. One hour. Yeah, so, but the problem is the elevation. Of course. Of course. But I mean, you know, LeBron and AD have had so many battles against uh, Denver already. You know, if you're in the Western Conference, it's not so much getting used to the symptoms of altitude sickness or uh, exhaustion, Joe, but it's knowing how to cope with them. And certain teams are able to cope with them better than others. And no matter what 
environment you're playing in, whether you're playing the Avalanche, you're playing the Nuggets in the Pepsi Center, or you're playing the um, the the Denver Broncos, I think it's how you cope with the symptoms more so than actually becoming, you know, uh, overwhelmed by them. Because if you've had that experience before, that's why uh, uh, you see a lot of these guys down in the NFL that go to Mexico if they can a couple of days beforehand because that elevation is, uh, I believe it's even higher than Denver's, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Yeah. So imagine having an NFL team in Mexico. Do you know if you were able to secure the right ownership, Joe? And obviously, we're talking about Mexico here. I mean, what are we talking about? But in all seriousness, if you were able to find the right mix of of ownership and management, do you know the kind of advantages you would have as a home team in Mexico? It would almost be unfair if you did it right. I I have a hard time understanding how there's a possibility of having a team in Mexico. The only only way that would work, honestly, is if – there is a massive change in politics in Mexico. Yes. And, yes. And, and I'm not talking about pres- I'm not talking about the presidents and, and the vice presidents and the senators. I'm talking about those guys that are. Uh, you uh, thought Raiders games were crazy, right? Yeah. No, I I don't I I can't understand how that's even possible. Uh, I really don't. Know, man. I, I I I'd have to see that one to believe it. Vegas was a little bit more realistic. So- so here's a prop bet. It's America, here's yeah. a prop bet. Here's a prop bet, Joe. I'm not a betting man, neither are you, but just just out of uh shirts and giggles here. Um over under assault charges first game in Mexico City as an NFL franchise. Uh I'd say one per minute. <laughs> uh, it, also, it would also, definitely many... be higher than Cleveland. Also yeah. I'm not no. sure if they would match Oakland, but and Philly, but yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, yeah, they could. So now, how do you, as as a as an NFL free agent, that's this is the thing with the NFL is there is no, I'm not going to Minnesota, I'm not going to go play for the Timberwolves <laughs> or the Hornets in the NFL. <laughs> you go where the money is there, right? Yes. You only have a short amount of time to make it. Yes. So what? What free agent, what agent, someone like Scott Boris, how's Scott Boris going to work in Mexico, especially with his <laughs> terrible summer this year, or I should say terrible off season. And what, what I want to know what the over under would be on kidnappings. Oh my God. That's you a, mean that, the players. Is somebody going to get kidnapped there? I think there, there's going to likely be a, if there was a chance of that happening, there would have to be a massive cultural change in Mexico. And maybe maybe that might be what is going on. Maybe the president of Mexico and the people there that are running the country are like, look, the only way we change this thing here is if we bring in an American something that's not just Americans, but some kind of entity that is bigger than Americans. Because you're a partner with a one of the biggest corporations in America now. Yes. The, and, and no one is going to say no to billions and billions of dollars. Another thing that's going on in Mexico right now is it's starting to create more than, than, than China, right? That's the yes. word. Yes. And, and this is oh, the, an the, 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 the manufacturing of cars is, is just exponentially exploded there. Yes. The, the only issue with that is if you see what the Amazon buildings look like outside the buildings uh yeah yeah that's a lot of work guys i'm just gonna leave it at that Different, there's a lot of a lot of work. tale of two cities hey eh, joe yes, there's a lot of work it's very these, dickensian outside of it is, it and could, twitter it, absolutely and what it could do is it could be it also could be a it, this is going to take a while too by the way you got to start somewhere so if there's a sports is a, is, is an amazing product people hate people hate on the the athletes sometimes because they're entitled and they're divas and and rightfully so but this sports and entertainment unify people Mm -hmm. could you guys imagine if there weren't sports or movies 
People think I don't need a movie. Yeah, we found that we, we found that out four years ago. How long did that last? Yeah, I'm like, no, you you're you're delusional. I go, you don't need it. People need it. People need a an, an escape. And and this is what it is. This is the this is the important part versus the distraction part. The distraction part does play a factor in in certain things. I get it, kind of like the whole gladiator, you know. In the, in the movie Gladiator, the emperor has all these games to do, you know, kind of keep the mob entertained so that he can do his business behind the scenes. The, the, nothing's changed, folks. Human beings have not changed. Technology's changed. Human beings never changed, folks. Everybody, oh, it's worse than it's ever been. Oh, my God. I, what yeah, am I going to do? The brain gonna, hasn't evolved. I that can't much. afford a house. I can't. Dude, you couldn't afford a house four years ago. No one could afford a house. <laughs> No one. I couldn't afford a house when I bought a house, but I did anyways because I'm like, well, might as well do it now so that I don't get myself in trouble. You know, not having a house. And it was the best decision I ever made. Guys, folks, we spent, I guarantee if you if you sit back and really figure out what you've actually spent your money on, you cry. Uh, I do it all the time. I've spent <laughs> money on stuff that's just stupid. <laughs> but anyways, uh, there's, there's a lot of, see, that's the other thing I'm worried, I was worried about, uh, Problem Child. Prostitute has been the oldest profession in human existence for a reason. Humans have been the same always. And I think that whole situation there well, to, is to a be, problem, to, too. To be, to be fair to Problem Child, uh, the body of the first man was found in Africa, right, Joe? Yes. So that man eventually had to eat in order to live. So farming, farming is actually the oldest profession of mankind prostitution is second yes it was uh farming and then to, to finish off the day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no mission that's not that's not the same that's not the same beer is different i'm talking about how many times have you bought uh an item you used once type stuff or bought a car that you, with a thousand dollar a month payment like if you can, like if you buy light beer, if you have to buy light beer, that's always a big regret. Uh, look, the the beer the beer thing is, uh, I've just never been a beer guy. So to well, me, I know, but I'm Canadian and Irish. So well, I, I understand. Believe me, you, you're born like into this, that. This, this cultural when you hear light beer, it's so. Like, how does that work? How does an Irishman? How does a Canadian Irishman? Not die from, <laughs> from too much beer. <laughs> I don't think it's you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to come up on both sides there. <laughs> is it because it's cold? Yes. Is that really what it is? It yes, yes. Okay, so that makes sense. Beer makes you warm because beer gives a lot of yeast in beer. Makes your yeah, tummy and all especially after a hard day's work. Like I feel it's See, just I, it's... I, 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 look, other than a couple of instances in my life, I've never took a beer and I'm like, oh that hit the spot. I just <laughs> I don't do it. It doesn't work. I I I've I've had beer with wings at Hooters. Okay. It was high for That was okay. the first time I remember. It was the first time I drank beer with food and enjoyed it. Okay. I'm a soda guy with with kind of hamburgers and and sandwiches and meats beer and like, wings work so well on the palate i'm not sure what it is but it I, just... I don't I, I can't i can't it's it's too bitter for me i like a sweetness with my wings mm -hmm. especially the lemon and the <laughs> lemon and pepper one mike god i've been addicted to that for the last freaking six months <laughs> anytime I right, just give me a lemon. do you ever heard anything else no <laughs> give me the lemon damn it um Sean, Sean is asking, "What is what's a good beer?" I mean, that's like saying, "What's how many? What's your?" Okay, favorite? so we talking domestic or imported? Because you have beer to differentiate. Canada, like Budweiser has more alcohol in Canada than in the U.S. Budweiser is good. That I would consider that a, a quality beer. Yes, it passes the QC test. Uh Michelob Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> Michelob with their funny bottle mm -hmm. looks like an alien. Uh, yeah, 
I think I think any any I can drink ales pretty pretty well. I'm a, mm. I'm a blonde ale guy. If I have to pick a, we go to a brewery that's unique. I'll uh, I'll end up I'll end up getting something like that. Domestic beer, uh, or let's say the the commercial beer, I call it. Uh, MGD is good, especially with seafood. I would it's, definitely I would definitely recommend if you're at a restaurant and you're having surf and turf, go for an, uh, go for a couple MGDs. Those are great. It's. <sighs> Beer has to be in a setting. Uh, it's usually not for, at home for me. No. I don't drink beer at home. It's got to be at a. The Greeks didn't drink at home either. The best, the best, be the best time to drink beer for me is it's always at a brewery usually, mm -hmm. and you're drinking that particular brewery and their stuff, and then hopefully you're there with a few people and you just keep drinking, and you keep drinking. And you so keep you like craft breweries, Joe. If if I had to pick, yeah. Because when I go to a regular bar, eh, just give me a, you know, rum and coke. So what what would you say the three best gastro pubs in San Diego would be then? A lot of them closed down here too in Temecula. Because the seafood is right out of the ocean, so I mean that I needs. Know. I wouldn't. Oh. Know it. I wouldn't know honestly. Uh, Ballast Point is probably my my go to. Uh, Stone Brewery is a popular one here as well, but Ballast ba ba yeah Valley is probably the one I, I I go to the most when I'm down in Diego. Here there was one that closed down. I don't even know if there's any breweries left here. At least nothing like that's got a name like that. Okay, Ballast Point is probably my my go to brewery. It's right next to my buddy's shop, so we usually would go there. When I ever go see him in San Diego, uh, you know, I used to love drinking beer at sales too. Sales, I'm telling you, man, I'm not saying this because outside, did you uh, enjoy it outside? It, it look when sales was when Seau and Gwyn checked out. The the, the city's really not had. The, it's missing an energy that those guys had when they were there. It, it really, they really did. And Seau's was the spot. It was the heart of San Diego, Mission Valley. And it was right next to the mall. And they, they had the greatest, greatest teriyaki chicken dish in the history of teriyaki chicken. It was called Mama Seau's Teriyaki Chicken. I, my buddy and I still talk about it. They used to, they used to have the, uh, the little bowls of rice. Must have been the sauce. Scoops. Little, they had these scoops of rice, and I remember they had the mango salsa next to it. I like, no, 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 forget about the mango salsa. Give me another scoop of that rice, and then with the because I always ran out of rice when I was eating. It's just it's like the perfect combination. And then we'd have, and then it, you know, and I was there one time when he was there. He was hosting one of the girls that was there. Uh, she went to state as well, San Diego State, and she was a server. And she was real cool, and you know, kind of just kind of struck up a conversation, and the boys were there. And we started, and I was like, I was, you know, guys were talking, hey, can we get a picture? And I was like, it's fine. Like, let, me, let me talk to Jessica. Hold on. So I, like, Jess, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine with him. So we ended up, there was this stairs to go up to the to the second uh, mezzanine area. And, you know, we're sitting there and getting ready. And Junior's talking to somebody. And all of a sudden, Jess is like, Junior, Junior, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the picture. I got, I got, to, I'll get it. And, and I, when you see it, you would have thought, Say I was sitting there going <laughs> the whole time, right? I'm not joking, man. He was talking to someone. I mean, jetted, took the picture, and was back talking to that person in a nanosecond. But you would never see it in that picture. It, it, it caught everybody off guard. I still stayed with the with the camera. One of my buddies, he's just like, you know, like <laughs> you could see him staring. I'm like, what, 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 what happened? He just went this way and that way. So it was. It was an epic night. It was the it was the uh, the day before the, the day after the Michael Vick trade. Mm. So Michael Vick gets traded to Atlanta. Talks to San Diego. They end up uh, sending the fifth pick. Yeah, the fifth pick to San Diego, 
and a second round pick and some other stuff. And the the Chargers got Ladanian Tomlinson at five, and they got Drew Brees in the second round. Uh, I can't remember if it was that same pick in the second round. The, I'm pretty the, sure. I think it was. Yes. Yeah. The Chargers got two Hall of Fame franchise players for Michael Vick. The only issue is they gave up on Breeze because they they thought he wasn't going to do what he ended up doing and they 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 came out okay with Phil Rivers. Drew Breeze changed a couple a couple of franchises and a few men's lives, Joe. Uh yeah, one was in San Diego and then the other was in Miami. When the <laughs> Dolphins dumbass doctors wouldn't uh clear him to sign a huge contract with the Dolphins and he ended up being packaged wrapped basically to the Saints. It was do, do we do we see Nick Saban in Alabama? That is the biggest question. Yeah, not if, if he, he has Drew Brees, Brees. He's, he's in he's in Miami, right? Yeah, I have a quarterback now and <sighs> I've built up uh it, that second year that they even though they missed the playoffs it was it was a very stout roster. That is just it, it's always mind boggling to me how that turned out. They didn't they didn't want to they didn't want to sign Brees because they were worried about his throwing shoulder after his his last game where he I mean it got spaghettied. It was mm. bad. It was a really bad injury. And Dante Culpepper tore his knee up, but they thought, well, at least he can throw. But the problem is he couldn't read a defense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little easier to have a have a I don't want to. I don't want to downplay Dante. Dante only, a, only, a, a, uh, only okay. coach who's who's sh been able to shut out Bill Belichick. By the way, well, it's because he knows who he is, right? I mean, that's that's the guy. Oh, uh, didn't uh, wait a minute. Didn't New England? No, New England shut him out too. Miami. I'm sorry, uh, Buffalo. Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. Buffalo beat the. The Patriots in two thousand three. Remember when they? Uh, remember when they released Lawyer Malloy? Yeah. And then the Bills picked them up. Yeah. In game one, they beat them thirty-one to nothing. Right. Now here's the funny thing about that: they met the Bills later in that year. They ended up winning the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. They beat they, them thirty-one to nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird, eh? That's so random. Oh, and I, bet weird. You, I bet you, Bills, like, listen, mother. <laughs> We're gonna return this favor. You guys called me up. That, that's you guys how called much me this. You called me that. Those yeah, the two team, guys the, are. The team was having a mutiny at that point because they were mad that lawyer got cut. So what? What are your thoughts on the uh, the other first round series in the NBA, Joe? So we'll start in the East. So the three six, you got. You got Indiana and, and Milwaukee. That's right. I think Milwaukee takes that. Uh, I think Cleveland takes. I think yeah, I think it's a gentleman sweep. I think the Pacers win a game, but I think it's gentleman sweep. Uh, Miami being in that eight spot is. I'll wait. I'll, I'm going to wait to see how that Embiid turns looks. Out. Embiid looks like he's um, kind of turned a corner. I think. Uh, I think Philly wins that game, Joe. I think they make it really hard for the uh, <laughs> for the New York Knicks here. I think they make it really hard for him because I, I, I mean, no Randall, no Mitchell Robinson. Uh, you don't even have OG. Uh, you're vulnerable, especially to the Sixers with the healthy Embiid. The the Knicks aren't going to be able to stop him. So if Philly wins against Miami, I predict they they beat the Knicks handily. Okay, let's let's say this. Let's say Philly. Loses on a last second shot to Miami, and they end up playing in the eighth spot. Yeah, and then oh boy, now what? <laughs> because Phillies won eight in a row. They're yes. off. You're right. They've won eight in a row, and if if Embiid is healthy, what happens then? What what does Boston get worried? I think they still win that series, but I'd be very worried. I'd be I'm playing a team that's. At, at at that point in time, either nine of uh, nine of ten, and yeah, because that makes it significantly harder for them, because now they have to go through Philly, 
Then they have to go through uh, either the Cavs or the Magic. Uh, the, I think if the Cavs get through, that's a tricky – again, that's – it's they don't win it handily. That's a tricky series for the Celtics, and then they'd have to play one of uh, you know Milwaukee or Miami, and that's that's extreme. That's extremely difficult. Plus, you'd be playing the best team from the Western Conference, so that'd be three, possibly all four rounds were significantly tested. The Celtics are going to play either Philly or likely Miami. I don't, I just don't, <laughs> I don't see Chicago or Atlanta winning in this situation. No, that, that right there is good. You're, you're talking about a one and eight. That's going to be intriguing. Even if, if, even though it's Miami and they're not that good, there's, there is a story there that that's, that's developed over the last four years. Now they've, they've met each other four times. Should they meet? It'd be the fourth time in a row, I believe. Yeah, I mean, we've seen an eight beat a one before. We've seen a seven beat a two. It's uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's just it, it, we were talking about it earlier, Joe. It's about how your pl- how your opponent is playing, not what the record is. There's a huge diff. There's a huge fundamental difference there because you could be playing a team that won forty nine games but they won 12 of their last 15 and they're coming into the the playoffs red hot or you could be playing a team that won 49 games but they really won 30 before the all-star break and they've been playing 500 ever since it's kind of what the rockets did they kind of coasted that second year especially when they got drex when they traded for him they were basically a 500 team they had stacked a lot of wins before they even acquired him. So they were willing to sacrifice w- wins and seeds to have better chemistry. Sometimes it works that way. And that's the, the lowest seed to win a championship in our, I would say, in our in the last 40, 50 years. Let's say that since the merger of 1976, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Six seed is the highest or the lowest uh, champion has won. Uh Lakers would be, if they were to make a run here, they'd be unprecedented. It would be unprecedented, right? Yes. The the Sixers are. Here's the thing that's intriguing. There, if it, I don't think the Sixers are going to lose to Miami though. I, I have a pretty strong feeling they're going to win though. What do you think? Yeah, like, they're going to beat Miami, right? I think okay. so. Yeah. Okay. So, I think Boston's begging right now for the Sixers to win because. You're going to have a healthy Embiid and a determined team that wants to come back up, right? And you have Nick Nurse this time versus Missoula. Nick Nurse is probably top three coach in the NBA right now. Maybe top two. Probably top two. Oh, he's been coaching the past month? Oh, yeah. So I don't know how this is going to end. And... Embiid has not yet reached the Eastern Conference Finals. He's gotten a lot of rest, even though he was injured. He did get a lot of rest. Could that be a recipe for some good things? He didn't get as much wear and tear during those times, got rested up, came back at the right time where they were able to run uh, some chemistry and run a lot of wins, got a lot of positivity here. You now go in to this play in win that game. Yeah, you'll play the Knicks, beat the Knicks. You face, I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen here. What if they beat the Knicks, then beat who would they play the Knicks? Wrong. Hold on one second here. Yeah, so right. the winner, the winner of the whoever the Knicks played, the winner, and, and it'd be man, that would be another uh, spicy Milwaukee, yeah, Milwaukee. Uh, that- or Pacers winner, yeah. That would be, man, that would be really spicy, especially for the playoffs. If the Celtics were playing the Sixers 1-8, and then you had the Knicks and the Heat at 2-7, you're talking about two huge rivalries there. Yeah, yeah. No. It, the East has intriguing series, I think probably more so than than even the, the West. The the issue is right now, beyond the Lakers situation and, and the West is – 
we have the, the, there has to be a way where the Celtics don't win it. If the Celtics don't win it and the Lakers lose to Denver, it's not going to hit as hard, although it's another year wasted. And then at that point, there's got to be discussion on what these, these guys are going to really have to do to, to make one more run. I thought this was the last year, and I, I could still be right there. Could be one more run. But there is no chance of trying to go get a third guy. I don't. I just don't think it's – you're already strapped depth-wise. You're really going to make it even worse that way? You'd have to really hit at the in the draft. I'm talking – top three rookie of the year type guy that could play every day. And then you'd have to get a game changer role player in the summer for you to go after a third star. And even then you still have five guys there, right? Cause you're going to probably have to trade uh, somehow package, maybe uh, D'Angelo probably trade either Austin or Rui. I would hate to trade Rui right now. Cause I think he's getting better and better. Uh it's a lot, a lot to play with. I would rather add more depth and keep the team together. But you would, you would, you would feel better about our chances if you complimented what you already have. You have what you have is you youth. Tool. You have yeah. youth, and you have experience too with that youth. These guys are now going to be. Some of them are going to be playing in their second playoff run. Some more, obviously, but together. And you want this to be a benefit down the road. If LeBron says, I want to play, because I think LeBron is going to get an extension. I think the extension is going to be probably 160. It's going to play another, uh, I think he's going to add three years to that contract. So he's he's under contract for one more year. He's going to add two more after that. I think that's what's going to happen there. Um if, if LeBron can play out those three years, then the, then there's obviously a, a focus on trying to continue to win. And if he did play those those three years, that would mean his career is twice as long with the Lakers as it was with the Heat. I'm going way ahead of myself here. There's so much intrigue on what could happen, what we want to happen. Uh, well, let's make this let's make it, this it, simpler, okay? It's hard so, though. It's hard to make it simple because there's it, things that they do that drive you nuts, and then they do something good. It's this constant back and forth. But then at the heart of everything, what choice do we, do, do the Lakers have? They, are they going to start over? That means they have to suck again and and get a high draft pick. It's it's it's, it's a really difficult decision and we're I would you know stone god bless him i know he, he wants this thing to kind of get rewrapped but i'm like i'm thinking to myself how for what what are we going to get for ad what are we going to get for lebron i don't know if we can get what we need to continue to compete the pro the problem with getting equal return for ad is that lebron is 39 years old soon to be 40 that that's the if LeBron was thirty five, you could get a really good return on AD. You'd have to, because you know he's he's going to get some some talk, a little chatter about an MVP vote. I bet he gets a couple. Um, the Defensive Player of the Year award is a popularity contest. But something tells me that it's 50-50 right now. I think guys could have Rudy Gobert fatigue and they just give it to AD. Basically as, you know, kind of like, uh, what do they call that, Joe, in show business? A Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> Which means absolutely nothing. I mean, you've won a Lifetime Achievement Award. Come I think up. they gave one to Angela Bassett or something, uh, didn't they? I, I'd be like, no, thank you, thank you, no, I, I thanks. Yeah, yeah. no, a, 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 a sympathy award is is oh a my terrible God. award to accept. But then you look like an a hole still if you say no, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. so I would hope that I would hope they they would say it before it became public. 
Yeah, that oh, I can like say, Marlon please, Brand, no, 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 like please, Marlon I don't Brando need it. I don't need it. Yeah, like I don't Marlon need it, Br- Like Brando did? Well, Brando, he... no, Brando screwed up that whole thing. He, 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 they kept him at bay. Francis kept him at bay long enough to create one of the greatest, if not the greatest, single role in the history of films. Long enough so <laughs> to, to make a masterpiece. And then, of course, as soon as, it's almost done. Just collect your best actor award. He sends somebody else to represent him, and that that creates what it created. And this but this woke thing has not again, I folks, nothing's changed. It just the pendulum just shifts sometimes. That's it. There's always been someone out there with some kind of an agenda, someone that gets off what is it? The moves off the cuff is that how, how you say it yeah off the cuff yeah, yeah. It, it, it's always been there it's just a matter of the difference between now and then though is it's it's instantaneous information and people have have access to their opinions now which 99 percent of the people that talk publicly should be flushed down the toilet uh not not them i'm talking about what they say it's absolutely useless and all it does is create issues but with that uh again sean i want to you know Thank you for coming here t- tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm planning on doing a show on Tuesday. I'm waiting on a, a certain answer though for the specifics of what that show is going to be. If if it's not gonna be, uh, if he's not gonna be available, then then it'll be just night the nightcap, obviously. So you're more than welcome to to join again. Then I'll I'll, I'll keep in co- contact with you. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight and asking the really really good questions. Uh, absolutely phenomenal questions uh i need to get i need to somehow figure out a better way to 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 monitor that sometimes we get into these discussions and i miss some some questions so i want to again i want to if anybody if i missed any of your questions guys i'm sorry i'll try to get better at that usually when i get on here i'm i'm a a motor mouth with all my crew but uh again thanks for being here tonight folks uh the lakers beat the pelicans today 124 108 to solidify uh, the chances of at least one extra game should they win on Tuesday against this same team, uh, then the Lakers will be a seventh seed and will play the current NBA world champions. And with that, I want you all to have a good night, have a good Sunday, get ready for Monday for work. But (laughs) until next time, I'll see you next time.